what was it like going back to the scene of the crime and confronting that step where you busted your tailbone? I had some words with it. It, him, I don't, her, I don't know which one it was, but I had some words, but it was nice to not uh, go over there during the game. So it's kept it safe this time. What got you going in the third quarter? This basketball is a funny game sometimes. Same uh, intentions, same shots. Um, I think our collective team defense allowed us to get more flow on offense and get more looks in transition um, and wear them down a little bit. And um, I hit, hit that one in the corner. I don't know what I was shooting at the time, but it was nice to let out a little yell, try to infuse some joy into the game. And you know, things took off from there. So it was, uh, it was a great quarter, obviously. We won the game right there and um, got to carry that momentum into New Orleans. How nice was it to sit the fourth, the entire fourth? Uh, it was great because our second year, you know, control the game. Obviously, thirty-nine to twelve. That that was a good run um, in the third. But they did their job coming in, controlling the game, closing it out. And uh, like I said, we got to bottle that up and maintain that um, that juice, that that good good energy into uh, Monday's game. Yeah. 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 I don't know days of the week. Oh, thank you. Going back to that corner three-pointer that you made in the third, uh, what kind of compelled you to celebrate that way with that yell? We talked about it at halftime. It was kind of uh, a little cloud hanging over us a little bit just in terms of Minnesota game, the Dallas game before. Uh, we didn't play terribly in the first half tonight, but just didn't make any shots, and they were obviously, you know, they had a lead and we just needed to, we talked about it, we need some joy, we need some energy, we need some good vibes, we need some smiles. And sometimes you gotta force it a little bit if uh, there's no reason I should celebrate a three like that other than than just trying to get some juice flowing. What did it mean uh, to you to slip into those sweats? Say it again? What did it mean to you to slip into those sweats that you're wearing right now? Oh, the mama's oh, yeah. Uh, this is, um, it's, it's tough because it's a, obviously a reminder of, you know, what happened, but it's also a celebration of, um, of, of you know, Gianna's life and what the game of basketball meant to her and carrying that legacy on, um, you know, in her honor. And I know her mom, her sister, her whole family are um, doing a great job of, trying to uplift what, you know, her, her mentality, her competitiveness, her fire, what basketball brought out of her. Um, and obviously, you know, with the, the foundation that they have and, and what the Mama Cita name means. Um, today, obviously, being her 15th birthday, it was, um, I was honored, and I know our whole team was, to, to be a part of, you know, celebrating her. And... I know the foundation is going to do some amazing work in her honor. So it's more, you know, the awareness of what they're doing um, and the work that's going to go into to honoring her life. So it's uh, it's awesome to celebrate, but it's still it's a tough reminder of, you know, it's not that long ago. Steph, James Hill with BNC Sports. A nice win at Houston. Can you use this as momentum to ignite you guys down the stretch? Eight games left, uh, six games at home. Uh, you go into uh, New Orleans. Uh, how can you use this moving forward? I plead the fifth on that answer because I don't want to get into what we that cycle we've been in before. We're just going to go out and play basketball and have fun doing it. See, and that's that's the mindset we got to have. So, I mean, time of year, it's the height of the cliche one game at a time. 1,000%. Sorry, Cass, go ahead. No, not at all, Kara. Cassidy Hubbard with ESPN. Hey, Steph. Um, I guess, you know, I have to ask, though, with, with you know, three games coming up against the Pelicans, two back-to-back, -back, maybe not the talk of 
you don't want to talk through your issues anymore, but how much have you talked about the play in given that you're, you're now kind of fighting at the, at the bottom of there? It's, it's weird uh, because kind of my answer is now like, We've gone every, we have every soundbite of what we need to do, how we need to sustain this consistency, what team we're going to be, our identity, all that type of stuff. And then, you know, we're in a similar position every three or four or five games, you know, hovering around 500. And what that's put us in now to your, to your question is um, kind of looking ahead and looking behind a little bit, knowing that these are some important games against New Orleans, not just because of the – or trying to get up in the stands, but you want to make sure you secure at least some uh, appearance and and some postseason opportunity to then you know take advantage of that. So um, it is just the next game ahead, but it is, it is a, a a big opportunity, and you now we got to be ready for it. Steph, what's your role in coaching some of these guys that haven't been through these type of runs? JTA talked about playoffs, and this is his first time. So how do you help these guys through it? Um, I think just being honest about, you know, we're not at that, we haven't been in playing at that playoff type level and the intensity every single night, like, and it's hard. I remember my, you know, first three years before we made it to the playoffs, you really have no idea until you experience it. And I, somebody can tell you all, you know, until you're blue, until you're blue in the face, what it's like and what it's a different game, the physicality, the intensity, the atmosphere, all that type of stuff. But until you feel it, you're always kind of wondering. So um, we just got to get there so that we get that experience. And that is staying in the moment each game, understanding that um, we just got to find ways to win no matter, no matter what it takes. Hi, Steph. It's Maria Vidal for Top Deportes in Latin America. I've actually had two questions for you, if it's possible. The first one is, how important is it mentally to win today? And the second one, there's a picture of you that went viral today that you post on your social media in which you were like training on that step, if I'm not mistaken. So what does being faced again with that dreaded step before the game ignite in you? I just like to have fun. So it was nice to come back to the scene of the crime and uh, uh, memorialize that uh, that moment. I'm still wearing my uh, uh, my pad uh, however long it's been. So I still have a good memory of, or a bad memory of, of that moment. But uh, it's, I mean, it's a big win for us tonight. Obviously the way we started the game and, you know, turn it on the second half and, um, I think everybody was feeling good in that second half. Understand that we uh, we we came to play, and in the time that mattered most, we could have let go of the rope a little bit, but we we turned it on. And defensively is what we did. Everybody can look at how many shots we made and all the threes and all that. You hold any team to twelve points in a quarter. That's how you win games, and uh, we did that. Hey Steph, uh, Ali Kambajani with the Athletic here in Houston. You obviously have a very close relationship with Stephen Salas. I wanted to ask about how and why he was so important in the early part of your career. And with Kevin Porter Jr. here in a similar situation uh, to learn and grow with Steven, um, your thoughts on him as a player and how he can grow? Yeah, Coach Silas is, um, he's always good in my book. He, uh, we watched so much film my rookie year. Um, he helped me understand what it meant to be a pro and, and see the game as a point guard and kind of deal with some of the, uh, the uncertainty that was going around the Warriors back then in 09. And he's such a good, solid dude. He shoots it to you straight, uh, very approachable. And he made me feel very comfortable, you know, asking questions and, and learning and, and, and pushing me too. Um, you know, things kind of clicked uh, my rookie year about halfway through. And a lot of, of that was, you know, because of the constant work that we put in, um, you know, behind the scenes. So he hasn't, I know he's got a lot of experience since then, but he hasn't changed in terms of his personality and and uh, and that should hopefully get him into a place where they can turn the, the tide a little bit, knowing that they're in a little bit of uh, a transition, you know, this year. So 
Um, I told him after the game, I'm excited that he's in that head seat. It's been a long time coming. You know, very uh, uncertain circumstances this year with, you know, what he probably thought he was signing up for, but he has an opportunity to change change that. And that story is going to be awesome to watch uh, unfold. And uh, I'm rooting for him. And, and your thoughts on Kevin Porter Jr. in terms of where he's uh, – I know he's only been in the, uh, the league for two seasons, but just um, the, the growth you've seen from him and, and how he can improve. That man had 50. I don't got to tell him nothing. <laughs>